Hi everyone. In Unit 3, there are two main topics. Intro to alkenes, and alkenes are molecules that have carbon-carbon double bonds, and resonance in organic chemistry. A lot of you may be uh, familiar with resonance in the context of general chemistry. In general chemistry, though, we were working mainly with uh, inorganic molecules uh, and polyatomic ions when we looked at resonance. In organic chemistry, we're going to look at resonance in terms of organic compounds. And if you recall, organic chemistry compounds or organic compounds are molecules that have carbon and hydrogen, at least one carbon and at least one hydrogen. Now, before we uh, look at alkenes, um, we're going to actually take a broad view of all the molecules or the classes of molecules that you'll see in organic one. And let me just scroll down a little bit. Thus far in unit, I think, two, we looked at alkanes and possibly alkyl halides. I will look at alkenes briefly, but then we might as well take the opportunity to look at all the other classes or types of molecules that we'll see uh, in this uh, semester. Okay. Unit three, this is video. Uh, 03B2O. This is probably uh, the first video in uh, Unit 3. And like I said, you have previous experience from uh, Unit 2 with alkanes. There's pentane and uh, 2-methyl uh, butane. Now, we said that these were alkanes. And I consider this a classification as a class of molecules. Okay. We'll get to functional groups in just a bit. Um, functional groups, actually, I'll tell you right now, functional groups are areas on a molecule that are likely to undergo a reaction. Alkanes are fairly... Uh, inert in terms of organic uh, reactions. You may know combustion from general chemistry, burning of fuels, but besides that there are actually uh, a very few reactions with alkanes. Um, but we'll come back to, again, functional groups. With alkanes we also learn cycloalkanes and maybe we can have this methyl cyclopentane and cyclohexane. Do you notice what I'm doing? I'm drawing uh, isomers. So these two are constitutional isomers of each other, and these two are constitutional isomers of each other. I separated them because cycloalkanes follow a different molecular formula than alkanes. Alkanes are hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons that fit the molecular formula CnH2n plus 2. Okay, so this has five carbons, so you would expect that it has 12 hydrogens, C5H12. Okay. Cycloalkanes uh, don't follow this formula. Okay. Um, I won't go through that. I, actually, I would rather you not memorize this when you try to figure out how many hydrogens a line structure has it's easier just to count. I would say it's easier just to count. So for instance, if I start uh, maybe on this carbon way over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. C6, H, 12. Okay. And then in Unit 2, we probably talked just briefly about alkyl halides. And I'll put a bromine right here. Molecules that have uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. This is bromo. <clears throat> this is 2-bromopentane. And we're going to call this class of molecules alkyl halides. They will play uh, a very large part in a bunch of reactions later on uh, in the semester. Or some textbooks call these haloalkanes. Haloalkanes because when you name this, Right, you, you name the, the halogen part first. 
This is two bromo two bromo pentane. On to uh, new molecules. We've seen alkenes before, mainly because uh, probably you were asked to draw constitutional isomers of a certain molecular formula, and maybe alkenes were some of the correct structures. I drew two here. These are actually not constitutional isomers. These are stereoisomers. In particular, we saw, again, in unit uh, two, is it unit two? Yeah, unit uh, two, these are diastereomers. If you forgot what that means, these are stereoisomers that are non, uh, that are not mirror images. If they were mirror images and they're stereoisomers, those are enantiomers. Okay, the class of molecules are the alkenes, and that is, after this video, the main focus of Unit 3. And now we're going to introduce something called a functional group. The functional group for an alkene is, it has no special name, it's just a CC double bond. What, how I like to think about functional group in class is that if a molecule has the functional group CC double bond, then that molecule belongs in the class of alkenes. Now the functional group technically is an area on the molecule. Oops. You see that? Area on molecule uh, likely to um, react. If there's a reaction happening on an alkene, most likely it's going to happen at the carbon-carbon double bond. Just a disclaimer, or a caveat, or a warning. Most, yeah, I would say most professors and textbooks consider the functional group of these molecules as alkenes. So for instance, uh, most profs when they ask uh, what is the functional group of the molecules above, I would accept both answers. Um, I think still think the functional group is just the carbon-carbon double part of the molecule, but most professors say the answer would be um, alkenes, the alkene part, I guess, or um, they should accept also the carbon-carbon double bond. But I'm going to, for this video, I'm going to make a distinction between these two, class and functional group. Again, as we go through these, these will be rapid fire. If a molecule has a certain functional group, we're going to put it in a certain class. Now, just for completeness, these classes of molecules, I mean, there is nothing, you know, decorative about any of these molecules. There's no, for me, there's no functional group. Even though in a reaction, it's going to take place somewhere, most likely at a carbon-hydrogen uh, bond. Well, I, I think that's the only place it could happen. There's only carbon 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 bonds and carbon hydrogen bonds. Maybe for the alkyl halide, okay, the functional group is, uh, we could consider it, uh, this carbon bromine bond. So it has the functional group, this carbon halogen bond, which makes it an alkyl halide. This will be a little bit easier with the rest of the molecules, I think, as we try to identify identify functional groups. So this is an alkyne. It has a carbon-carbon triple bond. Let me just switch it up a little bit. I'll give you the functional group first and then 
the class of molecules. The functional group is a carbon-carbon triple bond. And the class is an alkyne. If you think about it, we have alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. You can probably guess, uh, as we look at the nomenclature of each of these classes of molecules, see this I and E will designate that you have a CC triple bond. Just like the A and E indicates that you have an alkane, so this is pentane, this is 2-methyl uh, butane. Okay. Moving on, let us see some molecules that have oxygen in them. A first molecule that has oxygen in it that we will consider the class is this one right here. And the functional group is has, now has a special name. It's called the hydroxyl group. And if a molecule has a hydroxyl group, that molecule is in the class of alcohols. So as you see the, see the, uh, I don't know the organization of this this table, functional group and class. And then we could also circle or put a dotted circle around the functional group. I'm going to include the carbon that's uh, uh, connected to the OH. Okay. Let me just double check if I'm on track. Okay. Now, and why do we circle uh, the CC triple bond as a functional group for the alkyne? Those of you who are still practicing your line structures, uh, you may wonder why am I drawing this in a straight line? Okay, that comes with practice and understanding the hybridization, which we went over in a previous unit. The last before we move on, as long as we have this alkyne on our page, how many carbons does that molecule have? I could put dots. One, two, three, and then the fourth is the first carbon of the triple bond. The fifth carbon is the end of the triple bond, and then we have one methyl group way over here. And those four carbons are in a row in the real molecule, in real life. Okay, more oxygen containing compounds. How about this one? Okay. Approximately the same pattern, but we just switched some atoms. This is, uh, well, this is an ether. The functional group really has no special name. We just called it an ether group. Ether group. And it's really when you see a C single bond oxygen single bond carbon. And you see something like that. Uh, you have an ether group and you're in the class of ethers. If I wanted to circle the functional group, I would circle uh, the carbon as well, flanking the two carbons, flanking the oxygen. Okay. What about these two molecules specifically? Are they identical, constitutional isomers, enantiomers, or diastereomers? If you do a quick count of the hydrogens, and we know that they both have one oxygen and five carbons, they have the same molecular formula. These two are constitutional isomers. That's a cool trick, because if you're given a formula, the formula for this is what? It's uh, C. 5 H 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. You could pause the video and see if this alcohol has 12 hydrogens as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Alright, they have the same molecular formula. I like knowing this because Molecules that are alcohols have constitutional isomers that are also ethers. Alcohols and ethers can have can be constitutional isomers of each other. 
you may wonder now, now that we have a good set of functional groups, what happens if we have a molecule that has several functional groups? Maybe this. Again, the caveat is a lot of professors in the textbook will, if they ask, what are the functional groups present? They can uh, allow, or they typically allow, the class of molecules. So you could say this is the functional groups are an alkene, uh, alkyl halide, alcohol, and technically uh, we have alkane because we have carbon, hydrogen, single bonds. If it was me, I would say that of functional groups, our functional groups are a carbon-carbon double bond, a, a carbon halogen, halogen typically, if you want to generalize this, is X bond, and no special names yet for the functional groups. Uh, but an alcohol, I would call the functional group a hydroxyl group. And the alkane, mm, again, no special name, but I'll just say CC and a CH uh, bond. Those, to me, technically are the functional groups. Okay, I won't belabor that point. But we have... A few more molecules, they all have oxygen in them. The next molecule is going to look, look like this. And the functional group is a carbonyl group. Fg uh, carbonyl YL. That's going to be important. You'll see in, in a little bit. The class of molecules, let do this in different colors. Class, aldehyde. Okay. Now it's a little bit uh, maybe semantics, but the reason that this is an aldehyde is because you have a carbonyl group which is a C double bond oxygen, but it has a hydrogen also attached to the carbon. Now, there could also be another hydrogen if I truncated this molecule and put an H here, that's actually formaldehyde. So I'll say that an aldehyde has a carbonyl plus one, at least one hydrogen attached to that carbon. Okay. Oh, the other thing is. You might wonder, for line structures, I thought we were able to eliminate the H from any carbon, and yes. So a typical, not a typical, but a valid line structure for this aldehyde can be this. It's just for me, I kind of like capping an aldehyde with a hydrogen. For me, it just looks better. And I think most uh, organic chemistry journal articles when they have an aldehyde drawn out, would include this H. The other way to indicate an aldehyde is to have what's called a CHO group. So if you look at what I circled, right, it's just literally a, a carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. So this is your, we'll call this the functional group again. Okay. The next molecule is very similar. And let me see. Let me just put a methyl group at the end instead of a hydrogen. The thing is, this also has, we're also going to consider this a carbonyl group. It's a C double bond oxygen. So this molecule has the same functional group as uh, the molecule at the top, but the thing is, because it doesn't have a hydrogen on either side of that carbonyl, it has a different name, it's called a ketone. 
keto. There's one more uh, molecule that has a carbon-oxygen double bond, and that is a carboxylic acid. Let me circle now the functional group. And the thing is, I know it has a carbon oxygen double bond, but it actually has a different name for the functional group. It is called carboxyl. I'll underline the XYL versus the NYL of the ketone and the NYL of the aldehyde. And it has a carboxyl group. I think it might be useful for us to go ahead and write group. And the class of molecules is a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acids versus ketones versus aldehydes. Now you might wonder, well, let's, first of all, why are we giving the functional groups different names when they both have a carbon oxygen double bond? Does it really make a difference that there's an OH group? Right? So for a carboxylic acid, you have to have this OH group. Uh, before I tell you why it's important that we have these two different names, the other way that you can see a carboxylic acid with condensed structures, if I condense this, I have CO2H. At least condense the functional group. So literally you have two oxygens, a hydrogen and carbon in that dotted circle in both cases. Okay. Why the different names? It's because aldehydes and ketones have very similar reactions. But they're still in different classes because again, try to memorize this, the aldehyde has a hydrogen, think of formaldehyde, Okay. And the ketone has a carbon on each side of the carbonyl group. Carbon on each side. If you really want, you could draw that part of the molecule. And then for the aldehyde, you have the carbonyl group, but now you have a hydrogen also. So aldehydes and ketones have similar react reactions. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, if you're very good at aldehyde chemistry, you should be good with ketone chemistry. The thing is, next, carbo carboxylic acids have very different reactivities, and that's why I think it's good that they have different names for their functional groups, carbonyl, carboxyl. And these, the aldehydes and ketones have different reactivities than the carboxylic acids. You could say reactivities or they participate in different reactions. Okay, good. That's it for functional groups slash uh, classes of molecules. Uh, the main ones that we'll see in organic one. In organic two, uh, we'll have more. We'll add more molecules, obviously, uh, for the more advanced class. Uh, you notice that none of our molecules have nitrogen, but nitrogen is a big player in organic chemistry. It it exists in a lot of uh, molecules in biology in your body, and in also in materials. So that's it for the classes of molecules. And again, you can run through the list yourself. You got to. Quiz yourself. Rapid fire. Do you know what an alkane is? Cycloalkane. Alkyl halide. Do you know what an alkyne, alcohol, ether looks like? Because when you communicate with your classmates and when your professor goes through these reactions, it's going to be rapid fire. You have to have a good picture in your mind if they say uh, an alcohol can be oxidized but a ketone cannot. Okay? They're not going to slow down and, and rehash what an alcohol is and what a ketone is. Or later on 
in the semester will say an alcohol can be converted into an aldehyde or a ketone. Again, if you have these automatic, you're not going to be lost and you could follow uh, the direction your professor is going in. Now, I do have five minutes. I am going to try to squeeze in an uh, intro to structure of alkenes, and that way uh, we can quickly look to nomenclature. So we're going to start our focus on alkenes. We're done with the functional groups. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning of the video why resonance in this unit. It's because that a lot of molecules in organic chemistry that undergo this process called resonance, which we haven't really looked at carefully yet, a lot of the molecules that undergo resonance are molecules that have carbon-carbon double bonds. But again, that is for a future discussion. For the last four minutes in this discussion, I just want... whoops. Mm. Okay, still recording. Uh, the two alkenes that we showed, because again, these are diastereomers, but why did I draw them like this? It's because I'm looking at the models in my head, or I'm looking at the models in real life. So here's a zigzag molecule uh, for the molecule at the left. And the one on the right looks like this. If I orient it like that, okay. that's a molecule on the right. These are not identical because I can't twist along the double bond. So you might say, well, why don't I twist this bond so the methyl group is pointing up? And I'll prove that they're identical. Well, your molecule, when you make it, has this double bond that restricts the rotation. Any single bond, you should be able to rotate. Do you see how this methyl group rotates? But it can't rotate along the carbon-carbon double bond. Okay. So that's uh, one thing in terms of the restriction of motion. What that means is that, that this bond angle is actually set. We have this hydrogen like this, and a hydrogen like this, and we have this hydrogen here, and this hydrogen is here. Now, why did I draw those angles? This is review, because I could ask from a previous unit, what is the hybridization of that carbon? And you'd say that carbon is blank hybridized. The answer is sp2. It has, I like to think of the areas of electron density as balloons. It has three balloons. And it, that helps me know it's sp2 because, therefore, it's sp2 because to get an sp2 hybrid orbital, you have to mix an S, a P, and a P. You have to actually mix three atomic orbitals to get the three areas of electron density, or I like to call them as balloons. When you have three balloons and you hold them from the tips, literally three blown up balloons, they will form a shape that's called trigonal planar. It will form a like this, one balloon, two balloons, and it will be flat, most likely. You just hold it from the tips. The best way you can separate these three balloons, because uh, they're bumping into each other, is flat. And that angle is 120 degrees. And that's why I have the angle as such on the drawing. And that's why in the molecules, these are called SG, HGS molecules. See, that bond angle right there is 120. 120 all around. 120, 120, 120. Approximately. And it's flat. Take a look at the four carbons. The four carbons are actually in the same plane. I can't get I can't get these carbons out of the plane. Good. I'm glad we done we did some hybridization. We should next video we'll just jump right into 
alkane structure and nomenclature.